Okay, so we have our block on the engine stand now. Uh, we're just going to go ahead, we're going to quickly clean out the journals, clean the bottom, then we'll flip it over, we'll clean the deck, uh, we'll clean the bores, and then we'll move on to our pistons here and we'll start installing them into the block. Okay, so we got the block flipped around. We're going to be using the ARP ring compressor. Uh, this is uh, probably your best option for uh, installation of the rings. Um, it's basically just a, uh, a funnel. Squeezes the rings in as it gets down to the size of the bore and then lets you slide them in. Um, alternative options are these ones. Uh, this one just squeezes the piston rings in. This one kind of sucks, so I don't like using it. Um, the chance of damaging a ring is pretty high with this one. So we stick with this one here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, place that there for now. We're going to uh, just put a little bit of oil on the cylinder walls. I like to put it in my hand and then place it on the cylinder walls to make a giant mess. Um, if you kind of just squirt it on the cylinder walls, it gets everywhere. So we're placing it on the cylinder wall. This is just your regular 5W40 oil. Then we're going to put a little bit of oil on the spring compressor. Sorry, ring compressor. Place that there for now. Okay, then we're going to take our cylinder one piston and rod assembly. Uh, a couple things you want to note when you're putting these into the block. Um, again, like we mentioned in the previous video, um, if you've already done it, you know, you've probably done it a hundred times by now, is make sure that the rings are facing the right direction. So the N or whatever marking is facing up. Um, now's the best time to do it. So you don't put it in the, in the block and then think later, did I do that? And then you're going to be guessing and you're either going to take it apart or gamble. Um, so we're going to want to make sure that both of our rings facing up and then we'll move on to the ring orientation. You're going to want to pay attention to the ring orientation. Just like we mentioned in the previous video, you're going to want to put your top ring facing towards the major thrust side, which is going to be this side here um, towards the rear intake side of the piston. So if it's in the block, it's going to be towards the intake side, a little bit off to the right. And then the second ring is going to be completely opposite of that one towards the exhaust side. The oil ring, you're going to want to have gap here and gap here. That way there's all four corners and then the center oil gap will just be in the middle in line with the piston. Uh, we mentioned that in the previous video, some form of that orientation will be okay, as long as basically the ring gaps do not line up. So now that you have those orientated, we're gonna go ahead, remove your cap, set it aside. If the cap does not have any markings on it, this one has numbers on the same side it goes, I recommend Sharpie mark, um, just because once you have it installed, you're not going to be able to see the bearing tangs and you will not know 100% which way it goes. So you have to take it off again, look, put it back on. So just save yourself the time. If it does not have any markings, create your own. Also remember to set it aside. I like to do just one rod set at a time. That way we don't end up with mixed up rod caps. Take our assembly lube like we had before. Generously apply it to the bearing. I try not to get it on the cap mating surfaces. And then I put a light application on the side skirt of the piston. This will let it sit here during that first couple of cranks and uh, letting the uh, oil reach the cylinder walls. Um, this won't drip down. Um, even though we do have oil on the cylinder walls, it does drip down at times. And then you can also put just a little light dusting onto the rings itself. And then once you've done that, make sure your rings haven't moved while you're doing that. Okay, once you're comfortable with the rings being aligned, we're gonna take our piston ring compressor, place our rod and piston assembly inside of it. Make sure your rings are sitting in the groove somewhat and you can drop your piston in there. Let it stick out of the bottom a little bit. You're gonna wanna place your rod bottom into the cylinder. Set the skirt into the cylinder. You're going to want to make sure that your piston pin is in line with the crankshaft. Uh, make sure it's as straight as possible. When your rod goes down, you're going to want it to go in between the counterweights or in between the, I guess, the walls of the journal. So it does not contact. Because the piston does move on the pin, it will move forward or backwards if there's a slope, which is a slight slope here. Um, so once you get it in there, make sure your piston ring compressor 
is uh, snug against the block. Make sure none of the rings are sticking out of the bottom when you're doing that. And then it should just be a quick push down with two thumbs. Don't need to use a hammer. If there's any sort of resistance at all, if any of the piston rings pop out underneath here while you're pushing down, you uh, are gonna wanna stop. Don't hit it with a hammer, you'll break a ring and then you'll be waiting for parts. Okay, so now that we have the piston, number one piston installed into the block, we're gonna spin this around. Now you're gonna wanna make sure that your piston is all the way down and the rod journal and rod are touching. Um, that way you're not going to have the rod flop away from you when you flip it over. And then we can see here clearly um, that we have the correct positioning. So we're going to go ahead, take our rod cap, apply more assembly lube, generously again, just like the top cap or top uh, shell inside of the rod. We go ahead and make sure that Again, the tang is facing the tang, and the number on the side of the rod matches the number on this side of the rod. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna place our cap down. Don't put too much pressure onto it. You don't wanna push the rod off of the crankshaft. Um, it has a potential of pulling the bearing off of the rod, and then the positioning may be off, or you could damage the bearing. So you're gonna wanna make sure that it's all the way up. Okay, so now that we've got our cap installed, we're just going to hand tighten the cap down. So just a little bit on each side, you're gonna to wanna to just push the cap down straight into the rod. You don't wanna to apply too much tension. If you feel any sort of resistance, stop. And then once you can see that the rod cap is fully seated down, give a little bit of a torque. That is good. And then I always like to make sure, just to, before I spin it, make sure there's no binding. Push the rod left and right, or forward and backwards. And there should be movement in there. If there is, then you know that the bearing and uh, crankshaft have clearance in there. If there's any sort of debris on the cap or this is torqued left or right, you could get uh, a bit of clearance taken up um, that you did not measure and that could cause problems. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna measure the side clearance of the rod a little bit later. Um, but for now, we're gonna consider that installed. We're gonna rotate our crankshaft. Move it so number two journal is all the way down. And then we're gonna spin our block back around. Okay, so again, just repeat the same steps you did for the first one. We're going to go over a couple of these just to make sure that the point is clear. I know you can rewind, but sometimes things change. Uh, we're going to lubricate the cylinder wall with oil. This is just your regular 5W40, conventional or synthetic, doesn't really matter. This is basically just to allow it to install smoothly. Um, again, oil on the ring compressor. Then we're going to take our rod and piston assembly again, remove the cap. Assembly lube onto the rod bearing generously again. Good. Check our piston ring orientation and positioning. Make sure they're facing up. Again, make sure your oil squirter and piston orientation is correct. If you install the piston 180 degrees out, this will contact the uh, oil jet or oil squirter, whatever you want to call it, and break it off. Um, best case scenario, you just break the tip off. Worst case scenario, you crack it in the middle, the bolt falls out, you lose oil pressure. Um, so that's something you don't want to have to happen. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna orientate our rings. And then apply the assembly loop to the piston skirt. And then a little bit on the rings themselves. Double check ring orientation again. And once you have that assembly completed, you take your piston, slide it into the compressor. Again, you wanna make sure there's no binding or tightness inside of this while you're pushing the rings down. A little bit of skirt protrusion, place it in the block. I like to spin it, make sure it's square to the block. And then again, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the pin 90 degrees to the crankshaft or in line with the crankshaft, sorry, not 90 degrees. And then push it down a little bit, get it close, and then you're just gonna wanna put quick but light pressure or, or meet moderate pressure down on the piston, 
quick, get it all the way into the cylinder. You don't want it to get stuck halfway. Make sure there's no any sort of signs of the ring getting caught. Uh, again, if you do feel any resistance, just stop, pull the piston back out, check them, make sure there's no damage, and then go ahead and reinstall it again. If there is any damage to the ring, no matter how minor, replace it. Um, if you suspect that you may have caught a ring on the cylinder when you were installing it, pull it out and make sure. Um, you can get pieces of ring stuck in between the rings. If it is a small enough fragment, it'll just do its thing in that cylinder wall and it'll damage the ring, damage the cylinder wall, damage the piston. So you're always going to want to make sure that there is no debris in there um, that potentially could have come from one of the rings if this was not used correctly. Once you have it placed in there, go ahead just push it all the way down onto the crank. Again, you don't want to put too much pressure. You want to feel it go all the way down onto the crank. And there I have feel a good stop. Now that we have the piston all the way down, we're going to spin the block back over and install the rod cap. Okay, same thing as the first piston and rod. You're going to make sure that the uh, number is aligned with the number on the rod. The tangs are aligned with the tang on the rod. Make sure they're on the same side. Generous assembly lube on the bearing. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to install this onto here. Again, make sure your rod is all the way up against the crankshaft. You don't want to push the rod off of the crank. Again, it can pull the bearing off of the rod itself and that can cause all sorts of issues for you. Tighten it down, light tension on each side. Work your way back and forth. Shouldn't take too much effort. And once you feel both sides are tightened down, give it a good tighten. We're gonna go through these again and put more assembly lube on them when we go to stretch torque them for final assembly or final torque. So for now, you're gonna repeat the same steps for the last four cylinders, and then we'll move on to the torquing of the rod bolts once they're all installed. Okay, so quickly here, we're gonna check now um, the side clearance of the rods before we go ahead and torque down the rods. Um, so basically you just wanna make sure you have a, a minimum of eight thou um, side clearance. Um, there is different specifications for different engines. It's not a critical measurement. As long as you have clearance, um, enough clearance, you should be okay. Um, it does get quite large um, on some engines, but on this engine, we're just gonna make sure we have a minimum of eight thou, and then uh, we'll move on to torquing the rods. Now that we have all of our pistons and rods installed, we've checked our side clearance. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take out each rod bolt one at a time. We're going to just reapply more ARP lube to the bolt. And then we're going to go ahead and stretch torque each one. So first off, just ARP lube threads under the head. Reinstall it. And then like just like we did on the bench, you don't want the bolt to be all the way tight. so. Snug it down and then back it up. Make sure you can move it by hand. It's not touching because it will stretch it slightly if it does have any sort of force on it. And then we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna install our stretch gauge. Make sure it's zeroed out on the bolt. Once you have your stretch gauge zeroed out on your bolt, you can go ahead, you can remove it, reinstall it just to make sure that it zeroes out again. Which it does. So we can go ahead and we can remove it again. We're gonna to torque our rod bolt down to the um, foot pound specification, recheck it. We're looking to land around uh, 0 0.0058 thou to 0 0.0062 thou. And that will land us right in the maximum uh, range of uh, stretch on this bolt and give us the most amount of clamping force that this hardware can um, reliably sustain. Okay, now that we have our bolt torqued, reinstall the stretch gauge. And we are right at the 6 thou to 6 two. So now that we have that one torqued down, we're gonna move on to the second rod bolt. Again, make sure that uh, your bolt is not tight down. You just wanna make sure it's loose. So when you go to measure it and zero it out, it doesn't give you a false reading. Okay. 
that lands us right at the sixth thou mark, approximately, right within the range. So once we've torqued that rod bolt down, we're gonna go ahead, paint pan it just like we did with the main studs. Just so we can visibly tell that we've torqued it. Um, some people like to say they like to see if the bolt's loosened off, but if the bolt loosens off, you're gonna have more problems. And again, once you have it torqued, I just like to make sure that there's still clearance in there. Move the rod back and forth. Make sure there's no binding within the two components. And then we'll move on to the next one.